All right, let's just pray and ask God's blessings here. Father, I thank you for everyone in this room. And you know what their hearts desire. You know what their needs are. And as your servant and as your anointed vessel, I want to hear your word. I want to hear your voice. I want to speak what you want me to speak. Anoint me to speak. Give me supernatural recall to bring forth the words of life to every person that is open to receive. Father, we pray for everyone that's viewing by internet that you will just speak to them and you will minister to them in a very special way as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, my subject this morning is the peace that passes your understanding. Everybody say peace. Peace. Now then say that passes my understanding. Well, you see, our daily lives can be marred with conflict and turmoil. And it really makes it difficult to maintain peace when we are having personal conflict and turmoil in our lives. And millions and millions of people just can't handle it or don't know how to handle it or won't handle it and have to be medicated to make it through the day or have special medication even to get to sleep at night. Now, I'm not critical of that. I'm only making a point that medication is not God's intention for us. God's intention for us is to live in peace. You know, we had a, uh, uh, some friends and, and um, wonderful, wonderful people. And um, the, the gentleman, uh, his life was taken by cancer. He left the, the world with cancer. And his wife just did not want to deal with, with, his, his, with life after he passed. You know, he shielded her. He, took, he, he did everything in the world for her. And you know, I don't think this is good for us to uh, shield other people all the time. They have to learn to walk on their own. They have to li- learn to live their own life. But he shielded her so much that when he went on, we tried to help her and tried to help her. But she started medicating herself to get through the day and through the night. And then one day we got a call and she took her own life because and, and, and had lived for God for many years. So, folks, it's not just being a Christian. This is allowing God to be first place in your life. And it's my desire to help people this morning and every day to find the peace of God. No matter what's going on, there's only one place to find true peace. And that is not just being a Christian, but fully and totally surrendering your life to God. Now, I've said it many times that man is a three part being you are a spirit, you have a soul. And you live in a body. And of course we know that our soul is our mind. Our will. And our emotions. And then of course our body is our senses. Our five senses. Seeing, hearing, smelling, touch and taste. And so. I see many people are more. Ruled throughout the day. By their emotions. By their soul. Or by their senses than they are led by the Spirit. Now, we, we, you know, you, when you say being led by the Spirit, that doesn't mean you're so spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. But it means that you keep your body and your mind under control from the desires and the lust of the flesh and all the pain and the things that's going on in the world. And you allow God to be first in your life. See, when you're born again, God's love is poured. I'm going to use the, the term porn, poured. God's love is poured into your recreated spirit. Nothing happens to your five senses. Nothing happens to your uh, mind or emotions other than knowledge. So where is that, where is that love? It's in your spirit and it's like a well. You know, I remember we, we lived out on a uh, we acreage a number of years ago, <clears throat> and when we lived there, we had a well. And uh, I'll never forget uh, when they were digging our well for that home. 
I mean, it was just an awesome, awesome uh, vein of water that the drillers hit when they drilled that well. And it was so pure and clear. And, and, uh, but that water was in the well. The only way we could get it out was put a pump on it and pump it out or get a bucket and put it down and bring the water out. The water was there, but we had to do something to get it. God's put the love in us, but you and I have to yield to it for it to work through us. Now, when I use the word poured, I'm doing it because of Romans 5 and 5, and it says the love of God has been poured out into our hearts or into the spirit realm by the Holy Spirit Who was given to us. The Holy Spirit gave us that love. The Holy Spirit poured that love on the inside of us. And again, I want to just reiterate, as a child of God, you have to learn how to let that love work through you. I mean, it just doesn't start working through you, you know. It just doesn't start working through you. You you have to develop it. And... I I tell people it's not an overnight process. And I see people come to God and many of them have lived with a angry attitude, a moody disposition, argumentative, anxious or worrier, unforgiveness, strife. And so when you have lived a life from that premises or from that prospect, Coming to the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't change that. You have to change that. See, well, somebody said, well, the Bible says old things pass away and all things become new. Well, in this realm of the spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. In your spirit, but you make a conscious decision. You make a conscious decision to let Christ into your spirit. But as he, you, you're just going to let him reside there are you going to let like like us when we drill the well were we going to just let the water be in the well we drilled the well because we wanted to have water to drink we wanted to have water to wash we wanted our clothes we wanted to have water to wash our bodies so it's the same we don't come to God and make a decision just to have him living in us We make a decision to have him change our life. Give us a better life here on earth as well as take us to heaven one day. Now, as I said, as a child of God, you have to learn to let God's love work through you. Let me just reiterate again. Because if you've, if you've come from dysfunction of, of uh, uh, being a moody person, uh, angry person, argumentative person, always having to be right. You know, it's amazing how many people have to be right. And isn't it amazing how many uh, arguments it causes because someone wants to be right? Well, you know, uh, I just know I am right. (laughs) So there's no need to argue about it. You know, if somebody doesn't believe I'm right, that's their problem. I just know I'm right. No, that's, I'm just kidding, you, and, you, uh, and I want you to know that. But really, there's things that's not important about being right. See, many times you can lose your peace just by wanting to be right. Is that right? And so it's more important to let God flow through you. And when it's not important, why argue over something that's not important? Why make an issue out of something that's not important? Why disturb the peace when you can have peace? Well, I'm not going to agree to anything that's not right. Well, you're not right about everything. You may have a wrong opinion. You may not be right. But again, let me go back. We stand for what's right because it's right, not because we want to be right. Amen? Amen. Now, notice here Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. He said, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report or praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now, let me just go back and say, let your gentleness be known. Let your gentleness be known. Are you a gentle person? Or are you touchy? Are you angry? Is your fuse real short? See, some people have a real short fuse. You know, I've talked about this several times lately is you, you see people today in our world, I think their fuse is shorter than it's ever been. People are more argumentative than I've ever seen in my life. And you know, almost daily here in Dallas, you hear a story of road rage. And unfortunately, unfortunately many people we see that lose their life that's innocent because of road rage. Well, what is this? This is not a gentle person. This is a person that's argumentative. This is a person that's angry. This is a person that's full of strife. Because someone pulling out in front of you, someone doing something wrong, doesn't just make you that angry. Doesn't me. Oh, I don't like it. And sometimes, you know, you get a little aggravated when someone does something. But that doesn't give you... If if you're a gentle person, you you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to curse them. You don't want to get to ride in their bumper and seeing how much you can aggravate them or whatever. Is anybody here this morning? (laughs) So my, my point is what happens at that moment is not what really sets that person off. They're already aflame. They're already miserable. They're already upset on the inside. And so something is just touching that button when someone pulls out in front of them or curses them or gives them hand signals or does whatever. But God's Word tells us to be gentle, to be anxious for nothing, to pray about everything. See, if we're not praying and if we're not seeking God, the cares of this life, as I've mentioned many times, the cares of this life becomes greater than your peace. You don't keep peace because of the cares of this life. Now, he didn't say argue about everything. He didn't say argue about everything. He said, be gentle, be anxious for nothing. And then he said, be thankful And when we start getting up every day being thankful, hey, Lord, I I thank you. You give me another day. You give me another day to live. You give me another day to be at peace. You give me another day to serve you. You give me another day to deal with the things of life that come against me. See, many people get up with that, oh, no, i got to go to work. Oh, I'm dreading today. Oh. Oh, I just wish I didn't have to go to work. Oh, I just can't stand the people I work with. Oh, I just hate this place. You know, all of this, is it may be true. But all of that thinking is taking your peace and making your day worse. Instead of getting up and saying, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And then all at once when you say that, you see that face at work. You see that problem at work. You see that conflict at work. But you know what? The peace of God will help you deal with things that you are in conflict about. The peace of God. I'd rather have the peace of God than riches. Now, I want both. Oh, nobody here? I want both. Amen. But if I had my choice, I'd rather have peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Now, peace begins, and, and again, this is something that's not new, but peace begins by renewing your mind. And, and this is a daily process. 
You don't just renew your mind once, but it's a daily process. I want to say it again. Peace begins by renewing your mind, and this is a daily process. Everybody say, peace begins begins by renewing my mind. mind. And And I do it daily. Now, just remember that. See, it takes effort to renew your mind over and over again. It takes... Uh, it takes some effort to do that. Why do people eat every day? You know, I'm not a breakfast eater. I should be, they tell me. But I'm not a breakfast eater. But most people get up. They have something in the morning. They have something between morning and, and, and lunch. And then they have lunch. And then they have something between lunch and, and dinner. And then they have dinner. And then after dinner, then they have snack. Uh, and then they have another snack. Uh, <laughs> Now, I'm just telling you how life is. Amen. Now, we don't have to eat that much, but why do people eat that much? Number one, most of the time they enjoy food. Another, another thing, they have to have uh, strength. They have to have something to, to make their body function normal. Well, wouldn't it be the same serving God? You know, I've been married to this lady over here uh, 55 years. Now, what if we didn't speak for three days? Now, I know there's some people that's in relationship and is married and sometimes go longer than three days than speaking. Nobody here. Nobody here. I know none of you. You know, I know brothers and sisters that hadn't spoken in years. Uh Uh-uh, something made them mad and they hadn't talked in years. But yet they are still brothers, they're still sisters, you know. And then again, as I said, husband and wife relationship, sometimes they don't speak for for days. Well, you know what? I, I just can't comprehend that. I live with this lady. I sleep in the same bed she sleeps in. We eat at the same table. We ride in the same car a lot. And so to not speak to her for three days... You know, when she's at the office or I'm home working or or whatever, many times through the day, she may call me a time or two. I may call her a time or two. We talk. It's important for us to talk. It's important for us to communicate. Well, how can we not communicate with the Father God throughout the day? I'm not saying you have to spend an hour a day, every day in prayer. I like to do that, but I'm not saying you have to do that. But just thank you, Lord. I mean, just often throughout the day, just give him some time, as you would a co-worker. If you're talking to a co-worker about a project, you're talking to him about that project, you have a mission, you have something you want to complete. Well, why not do the same thing spiritually? So you see, if you eat every day, you do it because you like it, you do it because it makes you feel better. Well, why wouldn't we want to do the very same thing with serving God? Why would we not want to read the Bible? You don't have to read it as much as I read it, but do it to build yourself up, to get something on the inside. See, the Bible tells us that the fruit of God's Spirit is love. Everybody say, the fruit of God's Spirit spirit is love. love. Now, in... uh, Genesis chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, it says, The fruit of the Spirit is love. And then there's a comma there, and it says, Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now, many people, when they look at that, they don't read it correctly. That, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love. It didn't say fruits. It's singular. It's singular. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, what does that mean? That means that the fruit of the Spirit manifests or has byproducts of joy Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, if I were writing it, if I had been the one writing this verse of Scripture, I would have put the fruit of the Spirit is love and then self-control. But see, I didn't write it. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating it. See, that's where we come. We have that love when we're born again that's poured into our recreated spirit. But we must develop self-control. Just like I've said many times when it comes to 
uh, coconut pie or pecan pie or cheesecake or one of these, you know. I have to have self-control. I don't know about you, but I have to have self-control because my body says, I want another piece. Ooh, that was so good, I'll have another piece. Well, if we can have self-control, and, and believe me, I've learned to develop self-control. When it comes to exercise, it takes self-control. When it comes to uh, letting the love of God and all these things work through you, you have to have self-control. So you see, love is in us, but we have to have self-control to allow that love to be manifested through joy, to be manifested through patience, to be manifested through long-suffering, to be manifested through kindness. You don't just become kind. I mean, some people are naturally kinder than others, as I said earlier. But it's a developing process. I say this, you must know, you must understand if you have no Jesus, you have no peace. Now, I know that you, if, you, if you understand, you must understand if you have no Jesus, you have no peace. But if you know Jesus, you know peace. Now, I'm not just saying know him by name. I'm not saying know him by saying, yes, I prayed the prayer of salvation. But knowing Jesus every minute of your life. Oh, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. You know, you, you know some people at a distance. They're an acquaintance. Then sometimes you know people that are you know, maybe 15 or so, you know pretty close. And you know quite a bit about them. They know quite about you. But then when it comes back to really, really knowing someone, there's only two or three people that you really know or that really know you. Well, see, the closer we get with our relationship with God, the more we know Him. And the more we know Him, the more we know peace. If we know Him... We know peace. One of the most comforting thoughts that I have each day is from, uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 14, 33. He said, God is not the author of confusion. So anytime you're in confusion, you're not letting love have His way. God is not the author of confusion, but what did the Scripture say? He is a God of peace and Order. Wow. Everybody say order. order. You know, as I begin to get older, when I was younger, I didn't have any order in my life. You know, I just got up and did this and I did that and I did this. But as I got older, and then, you know, I put my clothes, my dirty clothes here and I put them there and, you know, just, do, you know, just had no order. But one day I got married. And after I got married, you know, I still tried to live that same way. Well, she went around picking up after me, you know, picking up my dirty underclothes and hanging my clothes up and washing my clothes and all this. But one day my pile started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I looked at her one day and I said, how come my pile's getting bigger? Why why don't you do something? She said, it's not my dirty clothes. That's your pile. You know where the laundry basket is. You want those clothes in the laundry basket? You got two hands. You got two legs. You got two feet. You take them to the laundry basket. I said, oh. Well, you've been doing this. She said, yeah, I have, but I'm tired of doing it. She said, that's your job. I said, but you're the wife. She said, you're the husband. (laughs) I said, well, I know that. She said, I know I'm the wife. She said, it's time you realize you're the husband. If you really believe you're the husband, then take your dirty clothes to the dirty clothes basket. And the ones that you're going to hang up and rewear again, put them on the hanger. But I don't want to do that. Well, if you're going to live in this house, we're going to have order in this house. And you know what? When I began to develop that Peace that passes all understanding. She didn't have to tell me anymore. And I wasn't doing it to please her. I wanted order. 
You know, some people have no order. Some people never know where their, their, their belongings are. I saw an app on, on, on somebody. I saw it on uh, uh, an ad for it. That you get an app and you touch it and it'll tell you where your keys are. It'll tell you where uh, your belt is. It'll tell you where your wallet is. It'll tell you where all these things are, you know. Well, I don't need that app. When I walk in the house, I take my key and I put it in one spot. I take my wallet and I put it in the same spot. So when I leave, I know where my wallet is. I know where my keys are. I always know. Very seldom do I ever pass and not do it. I might be in a hurry and need to put something down that's in my hands. But normally as I put it down, I'll go and make my run. Because I have order in my life. Order is so important. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, order is so important. See, peace will help you with order, and order will help you with peace. When you're looking for something and you can't find it, you lose your peace. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Just like somebody was talking on their phone the other day and said, I can't find my phone. Like they told their daughter, I can't find my phone. Where's my phone? Oh, I can't find my phone. The person finally said, well, you're talking on it. I think one or two of you might have done that a time or two. Lack of order. Lack of peace. Somebody say amen. Amen. See, one of the most comforting things in my life is to know that Jesus is my peace. He's not a God of confusion. So whenever confusion starts in my life, I know I need to stop. Anytime confusion comes, it doesn't matter. I know God is not the author of that confusion. So I need to just slow down and say, where did I lose my peace? Where did I lose my peace? Now Isaiah 9 and 6. I love this. Look at this, everybody. Isaiah 9 and 6. And his name will be called Wonderful. His name will be called Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Wow. Who is he? Who is he? He's the Prince of Peace. Our world... I I say it almost every Sunday. Our world is in turmoil. Why? Because people want to be right. They lose their peace. They want to be right. You know what? I just want to be right with God. Everybody say, I want to be right with God. Well, actually, you know, through love, the fruit of the Spirit is love. So actually, peace comes in your recreated spirit when you're born again. But how often do you go to the source of peace? Most of the time when something happens and confusion comes, there the emotion gets gets so strong and the thought process begins to get into The thought process gets into the problem rather than solving the problem. See, peace is an inner quietness. It's trust in God's sovereignty, justice, even in the uh, face of adverse circumstances. How many of you, don't raise your hand, but how many of you daily deal with adverse circumstances? Almost all of us, every day, somewhere, you deal with adverse circumstances. I'm not, I'm not saying that I got this thing down pat. I've, I've got a long ways to go. Occasionally, occasionally, you know, just the other day, someone said and did something, and I found myself losing my peace. I found myself angry. I found myself with my voice tone higher than it normally is. And I went for two or three minutes in this this confusion, this voice tone, and this peace. I was I was so disturbed. And then after I just calmed down and I said, I'm sorry for losing control. 
Now, you know, anger, it's all right to get angry, but the Bible said, be angry and sin not. The Bible said, let not the sun go down on your wrath. So I, I'm not telling you I got this thing down. I preach to myself just as much as I preach to you. Thank you for all those amens. <laughs> Seriously, I am trying. I am dealing with life just like you are. Things happen in our life just like they happen in your life. And so when this happened to me the other day, after it was over, I prayed and I felt so bad. And I felt guilty for allowing myself to let Anger caused my emotions to get out of control for two or three minutes. Maybe it's two or three minutes. I don't know. And I just had to keep praying in tongues and saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Well, he forgave me as soon as I said it, and the person forgave me. But, you know, I hope they did. But anyway, uh, you know, they were angry and yelling at me. Yelling at me, screaming at me. Well, nobody likes to be screamed at, do we? Nobody likes to be. But you know what? I just had to be the one to take control. Because the other person was just going to blow it up. Let me just put it this way. They was going to blow the hell out of it. (laughs) I mean, they were just going to blow it up. But you know what? I just decided, I'm not going to do this. This is not what God is. This is not what love is. This is not what love is. Love will win in a different way. And I let love come. See, peace is an inner quietness. It's trust in God's sovereignty. Justice, even in the face of our adverse circumstances. And I was having an adverse circumstance. And when that adverse circumstance was there, I got into it. And when I got into it, it controlled me. Instead of me taking self-control and allowing the peace of God to flow through me. You know... I read about a guy named Danny Simpson who was 24 years old and he was a Canadian and he went down and he robbed the bank and only got $6,000. Well, they caught him and arrested him and put him in jail and he got six years in jail. He, He went to prison and his gun went to a museum. Why? Well, his gun was a very special gun. It was a 45 caliber Colt semi automatic, which is a real unique gun, and it was made by Ross Rifle Company in Quebec City in 1918, and the pistol was worth $100,000. So he took $100,000, robbed the $100,000 gun, and robbed the bank and got $6,000. He goes to jail, and the gun goes to a museum. If he had just known what he had... If he would have just known what he had. See, here he was carrying around with him this weapon that had so much value and he didn't need to rob a bank. How many times do we have this peace on the inside of us? Somebody help me now. How many times do we have this peace on the inside of us but we let the exterior keep us from drawing from the interior? We let the exterior keep us from drawing that well, from that well of water or whatever. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm probably not going to get through, so I'll quit here in just a few minutes, and I'll make this part two. So if I don't get through these today, we'll just pick up tomorrow night. There's three things, three major things. There's a lot of things that uh, rob us of our peace, but they're all contained in these three things. And you can never totally get away from them if you're going to be alive. If you're going to be alive, you're going to have these things that's going to come. Sometimes they're overwhelming, as I just talked about a few minutes ago. Sometimes they're overwhelming, and you can let peace be taken away from you because of anxiety or, or fear or uh, the trouble that's going on around you. You can let it become so disturbing. And number one is stress. Now, they may not come in this order, but I am just have to have put them down some ways. Stress. Taking too much on. How many times do people take too much responsibility in certain areas? Or uh, maybe you uh, go buy things on the credit and you run your credit card up and you know what your income is. Not enough money. And then the second thing they're in this is not enough sleep. 
You know, when you get up the next day and you don't have enough sleep, I mean, it's hard to make it through the day. If you don't have enough sleep, there again, your peace can be disturbed if you don't have enough sleep because you're not your whole self. You hadn't, you hadn't had rest. And then number two is problems. <laughs> Everybody say problems. Problems. Now, problems will come. Now, I'm not up here confessing something negative, but problems will come. And let me look at it. Unscheduled events. Sudden loss of a job. A lot of people have been through that one. Things going wrong in your house, an appliance, uh, it, it breaks, or you have a car accident. You know, they, these are just things that happen. How many understand that? How many's ever been on the road somewhere and your tire went flat and you were in a hurry? Hmm. <laughs> Or something happened, your car just broke down and it's 107 out here on the freeway and your car breaks down and you don't know what to do, you know. It's, just, it's things that happen. Number three, people. Family. A prodigal child. An abusive spouse. Ooh, look at that next one. Ooh. Bad relationships. And then something I mentioned a few minutes ago, conflicts in the workplace. And there's that big old nasty word, divorce. Now, I don't mean that in a sense that I'm condemning anybody. I'm just saying, I don't know of any divorces that's really, that's really sweet. <laughs> I've never seen yet a divorce that's been sweet or been a happy. Oh, we're happy, happy. We're getting divorced. No, it's, this is mine. And the other one said, no, it's not. It's mine. Or if you have a loved one to die. So these are some of the things that I'm going to be talking about. That take our peace from us. And see when you let anxiety, unforgiveness, strife. And then you worry over things that you can't have any control over. You lose your peace. When you experience the peace of God. Through that love that's been poured into you, then you learn to control yourself without anxiety, without fear, without constantly being in conflict or confusion. Let me ask your life. Let me ask you about your life. Is your life always in conflict? Are you always in short fused? Are you always picking at something? Or are you... One that can allow things to go by. And I'm not talking about not standing up for truth or reality, but you let things go by because this would just cause a problem. This would just get me upset. This would just get me, uh, this would just get me confused. Why am I wanting to bother with something that I can't deal with today? Let's just, let's just relax. Let's just rest in the Lord. Come to me all you that labor. Matthew 11 and 28. Come to me all you that labor. And are of heavy laden. And I will give you rest. You know I think in the last five years. Even though I probably in my last five years had some of the most. Five to seven years probably had some of the most difficult things to deal with in life that I've had to deal with. Uh, other than losing our son and our daughter being hit by a car. Those were two major events. But I think in the last seven years, I've learned to be at peace. Things are things. And so when things come and things go, I've realized the peace of Jesus is worth much more than things. Everybody say, the peace of Jesus is worth more more than than things. And again, let me just close with this thought right here. Why lose your peace over something that's unimportant? When something important is there, why not turn it over to the Lord and say, Lord, help me not to be disturbed through this. Help me not to lose control. 
See, as I, as I spoke of my own weakness the other night, hadn't had this happen in a long time, but as I spoke of my own weakness, it wasn't long until I realized I may win the battle here by this attitude. I may win the battle, but I'm going to lose the war. See, some people, you may win the battle by being argumentative and whatever, but do you wind up win, losing the war? I don't want to lose the war. I want to know Jesus in the midst of the storm. I remember the old song, there's peace in the time of trouble. There's peace in the midst of the storm. So this morning, I pray for you. If anybody here this morning, your peace has been disturbed lately, don't be ashamed. Stand on your feet right now and let me just pray that God will give you back your peace. Come on, that's it. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Something's been trying to disturb your peace. Stand on your feet with me right now. I want to pray with you right now. I want to help you come back. I want to help you come back to that spot, to that place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I sense the presence of God. I sense the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You know, if it's, if it's a continual sickness or it's a continual thing in your body that you've been warring with and facing with, that will disturb your peace. You know, if it's anxiety or fear or worry, or if it's, if it's a, a wayward child, a wayward someone in your life that's just allowing the devil to cause them to go the wrong way, Cast your care on Jesus. Cast your care on Jesus today. Come on, everybody here in this room. Just cast your care on Jesus today. I want everybody to get into this. I want everybody to know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord Lord over your situation right now. No matter what's going on. No matter what's going on. Jesus is Lord. (laughs) <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come on, worship God. Just worship Him right now. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And you that are watching by, by the internet, God is going to calm your storm right now. God is going to calm your storm right now. I'm believing for healing to flow in this room right now. I'm believing for healing to flow in this room and throughout the airways right now. I'm believing for the healing power of Jesus to come into your your mind, your emotions. You're going to draw from that well of love that's on the inside of you. That well of love that's on the inside of you. Come on, come on, draw from that well of love. Let that well of love begin to boil up on the inside of you. Brother, I pray right now. I pray right now for everyone in this room that's standing on their feet. I pray for everyone that's standing on their feet in this room that's troubled or worried or fearful or frightened. uh, God, or if they've been angry or in unforgiveness, whatever it is that has stolen the peace. Whatever it is that has stolen the peace. I pray, Holy Spirit, right now that you will... Let the oil of heaven, the love of Jesus that's in that recreated spirit begin to flow out. Let the love of God go into every part of your soul, every part of your mind, every part of your emotions. And totally trust in Him. Totally trust in Him. Totally trust in Him right now. I sense the peace of God flowing. I sense the peace of God flowing right now. Come on, just begin to pray in the Spirit right now. 
You that are standing here, just begin to pray in the Spirit. You that are home, wherever you may be, not watching on your phone or your tablet or whatever, just begin praying in the Spirit right now. Pray in the Spirit. Let the peace that passes all understanding. You may not understand your situations. You may not understand your situations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody just confess. Everybody in the room confess. God is my source. His love is inside me. I confess. And I believe. In my heart. Peace flows through my life right now. I am at peace. I am not in conflict. I refuse the conflict. I stand on the Word. I'm encircled by God's love. I stand in that circle. I let that love flow through me. I have your peace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I am at peace and I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Evan, give him a hand clap of praise, would you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Well, you may be seated if you can. Thank you, Lord. Wow. I'm glad God put this message in my heart. As I said, I preach to to myself just as much as I preach to you. I do it all through the week. But I do it here on Sunday. And I believe God's touched somebody today. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for you some more. But as I finish here on the internet, I just want to give our internet audience... Well, let me... Maybe somebody's watching, just like I mentioned before. Somebody last week was watching and made a decision to serve the Lord. Maybe somebody's watching or somebody here. Let's pray the prayer of salvation out loud. And you that are watching, if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, or maybe you have somewhere accepted Christ, but He's not first place in your life, pray this prayer right now. Dear Lord, I come to you now. I surrender my will to your will. Have your way in me. Forgive me of my anger. Forgive me of all the things I've done that has not pleased you. I truly repent. Jesus, I make you Lord and Savior of my life. And by faith, I'll live for you. I'll not allow the world to distract me and take me away. But I'm going to follow you the rest of my life. Now give Jesus a hand clap of praise, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now you in the internet, if you're watching by Lightcast, you you have a little thing there you can... Uh, donate or you that's watching by Facebook or one of the other entities we're on Roku or whatever just go to our website the website is right there on the screen and it's real simple real easy to give a gift to help us pay the bills we appreciate you that do support you that have helped us and have sent an offering we're grateful for your support we pray that God will continue to bless you and open the windows of heaven on your life as you serve him And as you give faithfully to the Lord. Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll see you Tuesday night and next Sunday. Amen. Amen.